In this episode, I'm going to share with you five flies that should help you catch throughout autumn. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. If you are a returning subscriber, thanks for tuning in again. And if you are new here, my name is Reese, and I make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if you would like to learn more, please press the red subscribe button and smash that bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Okay, so autumn is now here, thank God. We can now say goodbye to the dog days of summer. And for us as still water anglers, that generally means that the fishing should pick up. Now don't be mistaken, autumn can throw some curveballs at you and really it's about understanding what is happening in front of you when you decide what flies or methods to fish. Weather plays one of the biggest parts at this time of year in deciding what you should do. Unlike spring and summer when the fish get completely focused on one food source, autumn has a weird way of mixing it up. One day you could be fishing straight line buzzers and catching loads of fish and then the next day you get 30 mile per hour winds, a cold front come in and that kills all type of feeding activity. So what I would stress before you think about what fly you're going to use is think about what's in front of you. Do you have a flat calm sunny day? Do you have an overcast and a heavy wind? All of these factors come into play when you're trying to decide what method to go to. And let's jump straight in with the first autumn pattern we're going to look at. The Hairs of Your Sussy Buzzer. Now this is called a Sussy Buzzer, a Suspender Buzzer, a Top Hat, depending on where you come from in the UK. But they're all the same pattern effectively. And the reason why I put this pattern in is that I am trying to target those fish that have been in all summer and are still willing to look up when the opportunity presents itself. You will have a body of fish in every small lake that have gone through the winter and aren't going to come to a lure or a bung fly or anything like that. They are solely focused on feeding naturally where possible. And with that in mind, you won't go far wrong with a hairs your sussy buzzer like this. What's important with a pattern like this is the shape and profile it creates in the water. And the reason why I picked this pattern over a CDC is that with sussy buzzers, they will sit deeper in the surface film. And the deeper they sit in the surface film, the more confident you tend to find that a trout will take that fly. Now, in terms of setup, I'd run this quite straight. I'd run a tapered leader with a tippet ring, and then I'd fish probably about six pound fluorocarbon G3. Now, the reason why I've gone six pound as opposed to say three pound is that flies with foam have a habit of basically spinning at times. So if you fish too light with this, what will basically happen is that fly will just be spinning around. And if you're casting 30 yards out, you'll never see that. But a heavily dressed fly with foam like this is likely to spin unless you sport it with the right diameter and strength of lead. But what if those fish aren't feeding in the surface film but are feeding below it? What would we do then? Well, fly number two is quite simply a Dialbach. I'd fish three Dialbachs happily all day. Doesn't matter where I am. The Dialbach is a fly I've got a lot of confidence in. Now this particular version is actually one of Jeremy's creations, or Jeremy's variations I should say. It is actually an olive Dialbach with a glow bright number 4 in the butt section and olive span flex for a rib. It worked really really well at Rutland in the early part of the year and we've carried it through ever since. So how I would fish this fly is a standard approach, either fishing a straight line or on a washing line. My preference in that respect is to go for an 18 foot leader with three flies spaced on 6 foot 6 foot and 6 foot. If that's too long for you, you can reduce it to two flies and fish them at 12 foot with the first fly being at 6 foot or fish three flies at 5 foot, 5 foot and 5 foot. So if you arrive at your spot on the lake and there's nothing moving on the top, you want to fish three of these straight and let them sink throughout the water column. If however you've got fish moving, then you want to keep them up with a washing line. So that means putting a fab or a booby on the point and just fishing them as static as possible. Okay, and then moving on to number three. So the water temperatures have dropped. That means the fish are going to be more likely to chase and you're not going to go far wrong with a hothead blue flash damsel. It's a stocky bashing fly. You've seen me mention this fly before now in previous videos. If it's not broke, don't fix it. This fly accounts for so many stocked fish every year, particularly if they're fresh. So in terms of how you'd fish this, very, very simple. 
you fish it on a slow or a fast intermediate 12 foot of eight pound fluorocarbon and then just mix up the retrieve now autumn is one of those periods where you've got to really mix up the retrieve you could be fishing on a steady figure of eight a slow figure of eight a roly-poly fast strips just try and work out where the fish are sitting on the day in terms of depth and then mix up the retrieve to see what re gets reaction if for example you've got fish following the fly on a roly-poly but they won't commit you've got two options then check it back out slow everything down to a steady figure of eight and hang your fly you will be surprised how often in autumn the fish will follow the fly right to the bank and take at the last second so it's really important that you just leave that hang there for a good 10 to 12 seconds before you lift off and start the next cast okay and then number four the dog's bollocks now it's definitely an interesting name for a fly but i first saw it when i watched a couple of videos from the boys up north so i think lol's fishing adventures was one of them and they were catching on this fly so obviously like anybody else i tied up a few tried them on a few different waters that i went to and it's actually a very good fly simple as it's not a complicated fly all there is is black thread as a body and then a chartreuse bead i believe it's actually a fly that works really well once the fish switch off the brighter stuff so if you for example you're fishing a blob under a bung and the takes dry up those fish have normally seen all the color and then they'll still come for a bit of color but just not something as bright and this is where a fly like this is fantastic simple as so again i'm not sure who created this fly but it is a very basic fly that is fantastic at catching fresh fish the dog's bollocks <laughs> Okay, and then let's not ignore what is arguably one of the biggest food sources out there for trout at this time of year, fry. So, perch fry, roach fry, dace, all those types of fry out there will become food for certain trout on certain fisheries. And you'd be stupid not to try and key in on that at this time of year. Now, my go-to in that situation generally are minky boobies, mainly because they offer you the best amount of disturbance and movement out of everything. With a long tail and big booby eyes, you can really push water with these, which in autumn, when sometimes the water is coloured, is the difference between you getting a take and not. In terms of colours, I like silver with grey, black and gold, and then silver and gold. All three of these basically match fry patterns or humongous patterns that are already established. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to fish these boobies in the winter months, why not check out this video here? And YouTube seems to think that you would like to see this video here. And don't forget guys, if you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. My name is Reese. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.